All right, welcome back to a video that's been long coming. This is my uh, brawler ship build video. The uh, the the ship that I've declared in the campaign will take on strike fleets and the bigger garrisons and kind of win our way to victory in the way the Paladin Mark II did, the refit they had for that in the last campaign. Um, before I kind of kick off, I mean, I'm going to start building the ship in the background while I talk, but this has been a really hard build for me. It, it's been something that I'm sure like the videos have slowed down a little bit because I've struggled to get this together. I've been building and rebuilding the ship for about a week now. It's, it's really taxed me to come up with a design that I'm happy with, that performs correctly and, and does the job that I needed to within a reasonable budget. We're gonna go over budget with this ship. I can't make it work in the money that I've got, and I think some people have in the submissions, which is amazing, but, but I haven't been able to do it. So what I've come up with is a ship design that in my head fits the criteria as closely as possible. The main thing that it's got going for it is that it is small, as small as I can get it. For me, low profile, small profile is a winner because then I can avoid shots better. Um, it's quite heavily armored with both reinforced structure and armor, which is not 1.14 like meta, but I need to be able to take some hits and that's the best way I can see to do it without just getting ripped and shri ripped to shreds by armor piercing ammo. Uh, my main combat style here is going to be to stay at range and take those shots and dodge as many as I can. Don't get close enough for them to use AP ammo, which is going to be hard to do, especially if you've got three enemies on you, but I think I can do it. Um, the design behind the ship is high alpha strike. I want to go for four D80, oops, I didn't mean to pick that up. I want to go for four D80 molots as my primary armament um, with two uh, Sea Whiz guns as backup. I'll talk about those when I get to it. As for what I'm building right now, I've got kind of a basic flower arrangement, I call it, of modules here using the, the, the slightly lighter ones. I think it's fine to use these internally because this, the slight space you lose isn't too bad. These shouldn't be taking damage. So I want to save as much weight as I can inside the ship. I'm also trying to include spacing where I can um, for the future goal of putting fire suppressants and fuel tanks within the structure of the ship as well. So they're not too close to the edge. That's a big design flaw that I have in a lot of my ships. Um, I've just built down here to where I want to mount my engine. So I'm going to put th four T30Ss on this ship. Give it a reasonable cruising speed. It's not going to be that fast. It's also going to go over budget. But uh, I, I've, you know, I've rebuilt and built this ship over and over and over again. And I'm just, I've just decided I need to stop procrastinating, like I mentioned, and just get on with getting this ship out. In fact, I think I'm going to shift this up slightly like this. Just make it a bit more snug. Um, now, there's going to be some... So probably some flaws in this ship that people are going to point out to me. That's fine. I, I'm, I'm not perfect. I will make mistakes. And honestly, one of the reasons I'm just getting on with this build is I've reached the point where mentally I am a bit blind. I've, I, I've, I can't see the force for the trees when it comes to shipbuilding anymore because I've built so many ships to try and solve this problem. And as soon as I realized I was doing that, I knew I had to stop because I'll just end up obsessing over the build and, and not getting anywhere with it. These are mounts for the, the thruster engines that I'm just making sure are correctly spaced out from the center of the ship. I'm gonna put down my superstructure down first and then talk about the modules I'm putting in. Um, so so I just wanna emphasize that this has been tough for me. And, and I'm really happy that everyone has submitted so many ships. I have so many ships to go through and I'm really excited for that. Honestly, I can't wait to go through them all. I've kind of avoided, I've, I've glanced over them. I've seen how cool they are. I'm really excited, but I've also tempered that with like, let's get my ship built. And the reason I'm doing it without checking out the submissions, which might disappoint a few people, and I get that, I'd be disappointed honestly, is I want to do it without your designs influencing my design because I think it's really interesting for me, comparing designs of ships and tanks and boats and stuff, when they all come from a different place, so we've got different philosophies behind our builds, we've got different influences on the designs of our ships, maybe we saw a cool YouTube video, maybe we browsed in the Reddit we saw it, maybe it's just based on like Battlestar Galactica or something, whatever. We've all got our own reasons for building a ship the way we do, and um, I want all of our, my ship to be based on my background and what I like, and then compare that to your ships when they come out. And one of the things I'm really going to do, what I really want to do, is I'm gonna edit the game files, insert my ship in, probably instead of the Gladiator, and then I'm gonna take each of your ships into combat and see how they fare up, and your ship's gonna blow it out of the water, because I know that the people watching my videos are way better at building ships than me. But hopefully people who aren't so good get some ideas out of this, even if it's just to put some spacing in your ship so you can fit some fuel in. So we've got our basic layout now, the idea is the guns are going to sit in these center areas here, giving them uh, sort of firing from the center of the ship, which for me helps me aim. Um, our engines are going to be mounted around the outside here. I'm trying to help with my lateral thrust. The idea behind the ship is that it's not going to be fast, but it's going to have a lot of thrust to just push it out of the way, and that's how I'm going to dodge a lot of shots. So let's get those engines on now. 
going with six NK25s, which is quite a lot. This ship uses up a lot of fuel, which is one of its biggest downsides. At the moment, we're, we've got a top speed of 1,000 kilometers per hour, which is amazing, but we're not going to sit there. Now, I mentioned before that I'm going with D80 Mollets. I have gone back and forth on the armament for this ship all week. It's, it's been one of the tr most trying things is working out how the hell I'm going to arm this ship. I've tried six D80 Mollets. I've tried four D80 Mollets. I've tried two Mark 1180s. I've tried six AK-100s, four AK-100s. All of these are successful, but they all have had downsides to them. Um, the Mark 1180s, I kind of got rid of really, really quickly. Obviously, it's a 100 millimeter cannon. That's super powerful. But honestly, I find the 180 HE does not do much to enemy ships. It kind of just explodes on the outside and doesn't go far. Whereas I feel like the D80, the, the 130mm and the 100mm penetrate better. And I think that's complete um, survivor's bias. Like I've got absolutely nothing to back that up. But for me, the the um, the 180 millimeter just, just doesn't do it. Part of that big problem for me is the clip amount. This gun has a clip amount of one, which means you can fire one shot and then it needs to reload. It also needs two ammo components in the ship, two ammo loaders to, to load the gun, which for me is a, is a lot of components. Whereas the T80 model only needs one ammo and it has a clip of four. So you know you can go bang, 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 and then move around and dodge. And for me, that works really well in my head. Fire four shots, move. Fire four shots, then move. Fire four, four shots, then move. As for our um, AK-100s, I've already got them on the Audacity, and I don't want to share ammo between them. And I discovered something while playing around that the D-80 Mollet can do that the AK-100 can't do. And that is my new favorite special ammo type. The days of proximity fuse are gone, armor piercing's terrible, in comparison to laser-guided ammo, which is insane in this patch. Um, I've seen, I saw a couple of videos on YouTube and a couple of GIFs on Reddit, and I was like, well, I need to check this out. And it homes in so fast now. Um, the shots can literally do 90 degree turns in the air to hit your target. And if you're aiming properly, it means all your shits, shot, all your shits, all your shots hit the same point, which means that you're just gonna do so much damage to them. So that's what our end goal is for taking care of enemy ships. We're gonna get these 40 80 Molots. Um, so I'm gonna mount two here, actually, and two here, top and bottom. And there, this does okay with HE against certain enemies, but you need that special ammo to take on bigger enemies. And I'm gonna go for the laser guided if I can afford it. It is very expensive. Now the 28037s, I've gone back and forth on this as well. Do I use the 30 millimeter? Do I use the 57 millimeter? They both work really well. And if you want to copy this build, you can totally steal it. But for me, the, um, the 37 millimeter is a better build. I need to push this engine up just one square to mount it to it. Actually, I don't need to do that at all. Let's keep it compact. Um, because what I can do is I can just put the 37 millimeter here instead. Now, one thing you really need to be careful of in this build is making sure that none of your guns are being blocked by um, elevation on your ship. And just to show you what I mean, I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna make a square of, oh, I can't do it properly. Er, let's just do it up here. This is gonna look a bit weird. So if I just do this, so I do a cross like this, this middle piece here gets elevated. And if I put a gun here, I can still shoot fine. But if I add more pieces around it like this, it gets elevated one more time. You see how it got pushed out the ship, and now that is blocking my shots. So you have to watch out for that when you're shipbuilding in this patch, that you don't accidentally block your own guns with elevation. And it's one of the reasons why I'm doing an awkward layout with my components where they're not straight on with each other, because that uh, that stops the, the elevation from happening as quickly, and it means I can get on top of it a bit faster, because it really is very bad when your shots start when your your guns start coming out of the ship or just your bridge starts sticking out of the ship. I've had to, some of my designs I've had the bridge off center because the bridge component gets pushed all the way out and it blocks my guns. So please watch out for that. If you're making a big grid of components, the middle ones will get pushed out and they will block your weapons. So I think we need three generators to get this ship running. Uh, I might need more, so we'll just leave that there. We're also going to need ammo. So we need six ammo for this. Um, I can go one, two. I can either place two single ones or find a spot. What I, what I don't want to do is I don't want to put any ammo on these outer sections here, but what I could do is move the generators actually. I move the generator here, move the generator here. That doesn't really help me at all. Uh, but I can move this generator here and then put this ammo here. I just want to make sure my ammo is well protected, as well protected as it can be. I'm a bit worried about this generator actually. I want to move it here, which makes it a bit off center, but we're going to put a large crew quarters here, which doesn't quite get us there, but it gives us a decent space. So we're slightly under on power. We're slightly under on crew. Let's actually move the crew quarters here and we'll put another generator here and that should get us all the power we need. We're going to add a few more components that will increase that. Now, I have made a huge mistake because these two hull components are actually for my landing gear. So let's just get a pull, a placeholder piece in here now. Um, the angle or anything isn't finalized, it's just to remind myself that section is for my landing gear, not for components. So we're still under, quite under on power. 
Um, but what I can do is I could remove this, put this in here. That gets us back up on power. And then instead of mounting this armor ammo piece, I could use the half ammo pieces here and here. And that gets me all the ammo I need for my ship. Now, other things I need to put in here, I still need flares. Flares are very important, even with the 37 millimeter. I still need radio. I still need um, armor. And that's kind of the last thing I need. We need to work, work, solve this power problem. Uh, but I don't really have anywhere to put this last power plant unless I put a half power plant in, which I don't mind doing. But the problem with that is it, it's only 107% over and then we could actually put a, a half crew in here. The weight isn't great, um, but I'm trying to keep this as compact as possible. So I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of tonnage in order to get the ship uh, as small as possible. And it is quite compact and I do like a compact ship. Now all these little spaces that are throughout the superstructure I haven't done anything with yet. The aim is to get fuel tanks and fire suppressors in there. But for now, um, let's just see how many we can mount that are reasonably well protected. So these two are well protected here. These two are well protected here. Um, I could put two here as well. That gives us a combat time of 89 seconds, which is scarily low. Um, I could actually put another two here because I know what this design is going to look like in a second. That gets us up to 118 seconds. I'd like to try another two here. And then as for these, I'm going to put two here and then I'm going to mount some more in other areas of the hull once I've got the armor on. So we've got a combat time now of 148 seconds, but that's before armor. And armor is what we're going to add on next. Now, armor has been a serious problem for me with this build. Um, you can't make a brawler ship without armor because you take so much 37 millimeter fire, 57 millimeter fire, the occasional rocket gets through, there's lots of HE being fired at you. Yes, armor is a problem because it attracts armor piercing rounds and armor piercing rounds just go straight into your ship and ruin it. But if you don't have it, you get hit by prox fuse and prox fuse just wipes you out. I've tried numerous designs. I've tried spaced armor. I've tried armor with gaps through it to kind of keep the, the, the weight down. Uses of, of special angling. A thing I used to do a lot of, and I'll just show you, is I used to do a lot of this. Um, so I would get these two types of components here and I just line them up like this along, along the edge of my ship, right? And make us like an armor slope. I found out this is actually a terrible way of doing armor because if this piece here or this piece here gets destroyed, even if you've got triangle pieces behind here, like um, if I did something like, if I did something, hang on, let me actually build it. So if I had like this piece here and this piece here like this, is that gonna work? If I do like three of these, if I did something like this, right? Mm, that's not gonna work. I, I'm trying to do an demonstration. I'm not really thinking about it very well. So if I do something like this, all right, so I've got a slope like this, okay? This is what I'm trying to show you. If I've got a slope like this, and I go like um, this piece here, 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 I would get rid of these pieces here because I've got a hole in the armor here through these holes. Get rid of these pieces here, and then I would mount in instead triangle pieces like this to cover the inside, and then I would get these pieces here which fit inside and do this. So if we zoom in, we've got a corner armor piece and a corner hull piece. The thing that I discovered was if these two end pieces are destroyed, all of this armor falls off the ship. They're not attached through here, even though it looks like they might be. This piece here is not attached to this piece here in any way. So it's actually a terrible design for armor, uh, which is a problem because I quite like the way it looks. So I've had to come up with a new way for sloped armor, which I think other people have used before, but I'm basically just gonna be attaching pieces like this. And that's what I'm gonna work on next. I might just fast forward through placing down the armor components here because it's going to take a little while. So I'll be back with you in a second. All right, so I've just slammed down some reinforced hull pieces and I hate doing this to ships. I think it makes them look really ugly. But I have, to do, I have to do this. This has to sit behind my armor to try and absorb some armor piercing shots. They will still penetrate through, which is why I've put my thrusters inside reinforced hull blocks, just to try and keep them alive because the engines are what I tend to lose most because I like to keep them on the outsides of my ship. So now I want to put some armor on. Uh, if you notice, we're currently sitting at 385 kilometers per hour, range of 794 kilometers. Uh, combat time of 148 seconds. So this, the, the, adding this hasn't actually affected our combat time, which is, doesn't seem right to me. The big problem we've got is we're currently sitting at 44,670. Um, I believe if I remember right, our budget was 42,000. So we're gone over budget and we're gonna go further over budget with what I'm about to do now, because I'm about to add serious armor. So we've got one, a couple of pieces of large armor on here. Um, actually, I can only really fit one there, looking at how this is gonna come out. And then what I wanna do is rather than use those sloped pieces, um, I'm going to be doing this, which looks so ugly, but it's the best protection I've been able to find for these ships. Um, 
it's it's been really, really, really hard finding a good armor solution that doesn't just get blown off straight away. And maybe I've done this wrong and I'm gonna get tons of angry comments about it, but in my testing, this has been the configuration that works the best. It gives me shot straight down, which is where I tend to take most of my damage. I like to sit, this is, this is really important, something I really need to emphasize when I'm doing this build, is that I like to sit below the enemy, so I'm heavily armoring the top of the ship, and when I've got shots coming straight down here, they're having to go through two layers of armor. If the shots are coming in from the side, they're only going through one layer, right? Okay, I'm aware of that. If they're coming in from this side, they're only going through one layer. But it's about making sure these slopes are protected from incoming shots from above, and that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Now, I don't want to put too much armor on, but we need to protect this ship. So it is going to get a bit awkward. Um, you can actually probably go like this. Um, and I think I've managed to keep some aesthetics at the same time as getting the ship armored. It doesn't look like a box. It is very boxy, I suppose, but it isn't a box, which is what I wanted to avoid. Um, and that's probably where we're going to leave our armor because I don't want to come any lower than that with the armor. Um, because we've already dropped our speed down to 259 kilometers per hour. We still apparently have a combat time of 148 seconds, which I'm really not trusting. Um, I don't think this stat works particularly well, but we'll see, because I've just added all of these components and it's still not happy. Uh, what are we still missing on the build? We're missing fuel, fire suppressants, we're missing flares, and we're missing antenna. Now, one of the nice tricks I've got is because I've been using these corner pieces, when I select this antenna, let me just zoom in before I select it, you'll notice I have mounts for the antenna within the body of the ship. Um, and it's just because of the way the components have worked themselves out. So I'm actually gonna mount one antenna here, one antenna here. So the radio antenna are integral to the ship's uh, body. Yeah, it's a little bit of a cheat, but if I put them on the outside of the armor, it's gonna get blown off instantly. And it's just frustrating to replace them. So I've done a little bit of a, a, of a dodgy deal with getting the antenna inside the ship. We've, we found some advanced technology from this ship. That's how we'll explain it. Let's just get these legs sorted. I'm not too happy with that angle. A lot of people tell me I need to use 90 degrees. I just don't like the way it looks. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can land the ship with maybe a 45 degree angle. I'm probably not going to be able to, but if I can, then I'm going to keep it like that. Oh, they need to, do I need to, yeah, we need to, I think he's about there. And like that. And what we'll do is we'll add some little feeties on as well. To act as little, uh, they look ugly as hell. Maybe look, or maybe they put a little crab close. I don't know. Okay. So what do we still need here? We need to escape a vac pods. We're probably not going to put any vac pods on this ship, to be honest. I, I just, I know I talk a lot. There's just nowhere to put them. They don't really add anything to the ship. Yeah, I might lose some crew, but if the ship goes down, the ship goes down. I don't really want to deal with the vac pods. It's it's a morale thing, I think, if I, if I don't lose any crew when they're on them. Right. 140 seconds, 48 seconds. Let's add a couple more of these because they are very important, but they are also ablative. If I lose them, like if, I, if I've if i used them bef before they get lost, that's fine. I want flares, even though I've got my Seaways, the flares just give me a little bit of breathing room. Now, one bad side is fl your flares can't shoot through armor here, but they can shoot through armor like this. So I can mount a flare there, I can mount a flare there, I can mount a flare here, I can mount a flare here. Um, I might do one straight up as well. Actually, no, I'll probably leave it like that. So I've got my flares on here. Um, I've got my radio, I've got my weapons. I feel like I've forgotten something important. So we've got hull armor, we've got fuel, we've got ammo, engines, landing gear, guns. We're not adding any sensors. I'm not adding any missiles, no aircraft, no defense systems. No, we've got everything we need. So here's our kind of final build at the moment. We need to test it. Uh, these two don't look like they're lined up, do they? I think this needs to go like this. Yeah, that looks better. Um, this is our this is our build uh, of, I don't know what to call this, the barnacle. It's not great. I'm not 100% happy with it, but it does the job. And I want to show you that it does the job. So the first thing we do is going to make sure it can land. I'll do that really quickly. Uh, there's a 10 over there we can land on, I think. The space to armor, I think, is incredibly important to keeping the ship alive during a long firefight. And yes, it's all about getting below the enemy. Oh, I was talking too much. All right, I'm going to redo that. <laughs> All right, so we want to be careful that we don't come in too fast because it is a very heavy ship. Um, it weighs like 4,000 tons, 40,000 tons. Um, it's probably right on the verge for needing to use the bigger engines, but I don't want to do that just because it increases the profile of the ship. And for me, having a small ship here is one of the most important factors in its design. Okay, those, those are... Those, uh, those, these legs are not good enough, but what I could maybe do, 
could I get away with this? If we use these legs. I don't know if it's going to work because I've got the smaller, um, I don't know, the thigh joints. But I've never tried it this way, so let's just try that. The only thing going to work out is, is whether or not this ship can land. We have also increased the weight quite a lot by adding those legs on. But it was just a little bit too low for those uh, those legs when they flexed onto the weight to actually... Um, they let the engines touch the ground and that just blew everything up. Ooh. Hmm. It's a little bit... It's a little bit dangerous, isn't it? It's a little bit dangerous. I maybe need to replace these legs. What do we lose? Two for eight. Well, I'll I'll fiddle around with that off camera. We don't need to worry about that right now because what I want to do is test this in combat. So first of all, I want to show you how this thing operates in perfect conditions. Okay. So this is never really going to happen. But if I get into combat, um, let's say I'm taking on a strike fleet, which was the, the hope. So I've got a whole ton of very scary ships here, um, and I've got laser guided ammo. I've got a lot of laser guided ammo. This is how it kind of plays out. That's my first target. I want to get low with this ship so they're shooting down on my armor. That's very important. Um, okay, watch this. So that's half of his, his armor gone already with um, from D80s. Now one of the only problems is you've got to kind of keep an eye on the ship you're shooting at. I can even fire off target and just bring these shots in. That's one down. Just dodge this uh, prox fuse and let's make sure we don't hit the ground. We'll just launch a flare here. The one problem I have with using this laser guided ammo is there's a lot for me to think about and I sometimes just make some mistakes because uh, I've got too many things to keep track of. It's like when I try and talk when I fight. You can see how much short work it's making of these ships. If you try and fight these with HE, it takes so long to destroy them. The There's a good example of why this laser guided ammo is insane. I feel like I feel like it's I don't know, packing shaped charges or something. Because not only does it hit very, very accurately because you're guiding it in, but the it, it just does huge explosions. This guy's not going to last very long. That's him dead already. Now, uh, the first few didn't go very well, but now you're probably starting to see why um, I'm very excited to use laser guided ammo. Oh, I messed that up because I was, wasn't paying attention. Now, the one bad thing about laser guided ammo is it is very, very expensive. Like, super expensive. So we want to be trying to salvage as much ammo from enemies as we can in the hope that we randomly get as much as we can. It, it, it's really important. Another advantage of using the D80s as well is the 130 millimeter laser guided is a lot cheaper than the 180 millimeter laser guided. All these things will matter a lot in this campaign. By the way, I have found that Griffins and Archangels are among the hardest of these ships to brawl with. So we have taken quite a lot of armored armor damage in this fight so far. But we're still in one piece. What we need to do is just make sure we keep swapping over. This is also a very, very big fleet we're fighting right now. Okay, we lost our first engine. Got another engine fire. Wow, you see that missile come through the all of the Sea Whiz? Okay, so that's an example of me finding a ridiculously huge fleet and winning with laser guided ammo. And that's not gonna happen every time. So let's just do a different test. Let's go for difficulty, say eight, mid-large fleet, okay? That's probably more likely what we're gonna finding. We're not gonna go in with any HE. Um, we're gonna fight this with normal. Now this is gonna be really difficult. This is me taking on, this, this is the example of me accidentally coming in on a strike fleet and a big garrison together. Um, the biggest threats here, gladiator, of course, the archangels, very hard to kill. 
Um, because I like to attack from the bottom, their critical components are at the top, their bridges are at the top of the ship. Um, gladiators are easy to kill if you get beneath them, Paladins are easy to kill, Retrepids. Negevs aren't too bad to kill from below, especially because the bridge is here. But Archangels and Gladiators are, well, Archangels have very well protected bridges from below, which is where the ship is designed to fight from, which is something we need to keep in mind. Now that I'm not having to track those missiles, those, those guided laser guided rounds, I should be able to do a lot better of a job of, of dodging shots and you'll hopefully see a better um, result for me. Now you may think that this Intrepid is a, a ship to ignore, but it's actually one of the scariest ships on the battlefield. Because I can keep my distance from the Archangels and the Griffins. I can't keep my distance from an Intrepid, and the Intrepid is very likely, I should have launched a flare, to uh, hit me with Prox Fuse at point blank range, or armor piercing at point blank range. So I actually need to take it out as a high priority. Same with this Paladin Mark II. These lighter ships are a bigger threat. Well, the, the ideal is to get low, and I need to get them between me and the enemy ship, the other enemy ship. So they're hitting each other with rounds. And any rounds that I miss with will fly past and hit the other enemy. That's the plan. Now, these guys have split up quite dramatically. And I need to watch that, uh, was it, it's an Archangel, very carefully that it doesn't get an angle on my lower body. Okay, that's the Paladin down. Somebody big is above us. Maybe we want to focus on the Archangel now. It's quite low down. Um, I might be able to get some good shots on it. We just need to make sure we don't get hit by the... Okay, he's, he's backing off. So we've got two Archangels in the theater right now. And you can see they're wrecking our top armor. And this is why you don't want to get into a fight with an enemy strike fleet with no special ammo. Because if I had Prox Fuse here, I would have taken these guys out already. But now we're really taking a lot of damage. And even if I win this fight, we're probably in a situation where it wouldn't have been worth it. Because it costs, it's going to cost me way too much money to get this ship repaired. And it could take too much time. And while the ship is out of action, it's just it's not doing anything for me. Um, and that's a big problem. The ship is still my ship is still 100% combat effective. The big problem that I have, of course, is that it is starting to get abraded by the amount of fire that's coming at it. Let's just try and finish this Archangel off before we start focusing on the other one. Okay, he just died of fire damage. Excellent. So now we need to deal with this one here. I took a, a, some prox few shots on the bottom of me there, which were not good. Got a gladiator coming in. We might need to shift to that. It is a bigger threat. Because again, like the Intrepid and the Paladin, the gladiator will get in close and just ruin us. Whoops, I did not see that missile coming. We just lost a generator. We've now lost our top armor completely. And we're now in a situation where we're going to start losing um, equipment very, very quickly. That's that gladiator dealt with, but I saw some more 100 mm prox fuse coming in. We're actually going to start taking, I think there's another gladiator hanging out at the top of the screen right now. Yeah, there's another gladiator up above us. So we need to deal with that very quickly if we're going to make it through this fight. He's hiding from us, though. He's very, very high up. It's not a gladiator. No, I'm sure there was gladiator shots coming in. It must be that it's, uh, Griffin. Or Negev, maybe. All right. I think that's a decent demonstration. Just very quickly, before I, I end the video, um, I'm going to just show you how it works with prox views. So let's say we've got some prox views. Um, so we'll go back for difficulty 8, medium, large. And just, you'll just see the difference, how much quicker we can deal with stuff. Any special ammo completely changes the way the fight works itself out. Um, this Intrepid is just going to die really quickly if I can get a shot to hit it. Oh, that Paladin below us is a big threat. Another nice advantage of using Prox Fuse is you can actually use the shoot damage incoming missiles as well. It's also very forgiving on missing, which is, as we know, something I'm very bad at. See what I mean about the uh, Intrepid coming in with armor piercing? Oh, not paying attention to missiles. That's very bad. Paladin's almost dead. Prox Fuse Wars. Something you gotta be careful of is once you get a lot of flak or shrapnel in the air, your Prox Fuse will be detonated by it. We're losing a lot of, taking a lot of damage on that lower area. I want to try and shift sides here and get the other side of my ship facing the enemy where I haven't taken as much damage. I've been tanking on the left hand side. I want to start tanking on the right. So second fuel fire. It's because I've got um, too much fuel near the edge of the ship, unfortunately. So if I come around here, start taking damage on this side. And you notice I like to keep a 37 millimeter fully loaded for Seawiz Judy. Especially against these bigger ships, it doesn't really do very much against um, their armor. And then if they get past, I've got my flares as my emergency backup. You need to be careful because this uh, Bore has gotten below us. Hmm. Maybe we do need a little bit of a redesign. 
It's those engines that stick out that are causing the problem. The proc shoes isn't performing as well as I was expecting to do against these guys, unfortunately. Once you start getting into them with the procs fuse, it really does do a lot of damage. And this is where I need to be. It's just at range, able to dodge their shots, and just plugging away. It's a it's a war of attrition. It's not about like assassinating them as quickly as possible, which is a difference from how you need to fly ships like the Audacity. Now, I know you can build a bigger, better ship than the one I built, but the biggest issue I have is budgetary. Um, that's me out of fuel fire suppressants. Okay, so we're gonna lose that fight eventually. So we do need the, uh, the, um, the laser guide is very important here. Biggest problem is we're losing these two engines quite a lot. Um, I could maybe just, maybe just shore up the hull a little bit more here like this. Oh, I can't. That's okay. I can move that flare cannon. And that just gives it a little bit more um, a blade of armor to deal with. We're 243 kilometers. I don't want to go much slower than that. But what I could do is just move this armor piece down and add another piece here, like this. Just gives me a slightly bit, bit more protection on the sides. But that's really it. This is this is our barnacle. I think that's what I'm going to call the ship. It's not ideal. You can tell in the tone of my voice that I'm not 100% happy with it. But we need to get started with the campaign. If I get the right armor for it, excuse me, if I get the right ammo for it, this ship will do the job. And for now, I think that's going to be good enough. We'll maybe try and break the game completely with our next run through if we do another one. But I'm quite happy with this as it is. So um, I'm going to take it as it is. And I'm going to get this video finished. Next video is going to be the start of the campaign. And I'm going to interspice campaign videos with me checking out your submissions. Thank you again for everyone who gave me one. Really appreciate it. Thank you for watching the videos. For people who are subscribing and commenting, thank you so much. I want to reply to every comment that comes through. It might take me a couple of days sometimes, but I do read every comment. And honestly, I love getting them. It's, it's nice to chat to people about games that I'm really excited about. And this is one of them. So uh, thanks again for watching. And I will catch you in the next video when we start the campaign.